Okay, guys, let's take a look at 4.0.0 .0 energy release hazards. Some trade terms you need to be familiar with. Please read over these, um, particularly lockout, tagout, formal procedure for taking equipment out of service and ensuring that it cannot be operated until an authorized person has removed the lock and or warning tag. And it says ground. A lot, of, a lot of people don't understand what ground or grounding is. Ground is the earth, and grounding is a connection to that earth. It says ground the conducting connection between electrical equipment or an electrical circuit and the earth. And a ground fault circuit interrupter, a GFCI, a device that interrupts and de-energizes an electrical circuit to protect a person from electrocution. So a GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, is personnel protection. And what happens with the GFCI is it monitors the current in the circuit. And if there's a, a small imbalance in the circuit, then it turns it off really fast. Well, on the job site, a lot of the shocks that we receive comes from uh, moving a, a wire or a tool that's plugged in. And one wire is skinned out and we start receiving a shock. A GFCI would see that imbalance when it was really small before it got big enough to hurt us. And it turned it off in 1 40th of a second. All right, so that's personnel protection. Circuit breakers and fuses are wire and equipment protection. We want to always remember that. In this chart right here, this is telling us that if we were to have electricity delivering current into our body, uh, what amount would have generally what kind of effects? And I say generally because you can look up this chart from different places and it's, the numbers are a little different, the outcomes are a little different, but they're generally all the same. Any circuit that you could get into, you could be on the, the low end to the high end, and there's a lot of factors that change that. But generally, if I get into one milliamp, right here it says 0 0.001 amps. All right, so most times we're in electricity, what we're doing, we're talking about milliamps or amps. So milliamps is, is a, uh, if to imagine it, if we had zero to one, if in between these hands was one full amp, if I split it into 1,000 pieces and pulled out one little sliver, that would be one milliamp. So six milliamps would be, of one amp, six little slivers. All right. Every circuit that we work on, most all of them, generally is 15 full amps or higher. So in any circuit, it has a potential of 15,000 times what we're talking about in this chart could happen. It says one milliamp, one one thousandth of an amp would probably give you a faint tingle. An example would be a watch battery. Five amps, a nine volt battery. It says slight shock. Six to 25 for a woman, nine to 30 for a man. Christmas tree bulb, painful shock, muscular control is lost. When they say muscular control, they mean if I'm touching that wire, I just squeeze onto it and cannot let go. 1 amp to 9.9 .9 amps, uh, like all the things that we'll work with, jigsaw, sawzall, portaband, portable drill, can cause ventricular fibrillation and nerve damage. Death may result. Now, ventricular fibrillation, our heart is receiving a voltage and current from our body and it's boom, boom, expanding and boom, boom, contracting, boom, 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 boom. And when it does it, it brings in blood and mixes it with oxygen and, and it pushes it back out to where it should go. And when we, when we get hit with something that puts us in ventricular fibrillation, it doesn't just stop the heart. It kind of throws the heart out of, out of rhythm. So it doesn't, it doesn't expand and contract like it was supposed to. And it, it, it just kind of starts wiggling. And as it wiggles and moves around, blood will pool around it and pool around it. So it'll just sit there like a little bowl of jello. Now, to get out of ventricular fibrillation, you've got to have a defib machine. You know, the ones you see on TV, they clear, poof, defibrillation machine. Never seen one of those on a job site. If somebody required one and we had to call an ambulance that had one, it'd probably been 15, 20, 30 minutes or more away. You need to think about this. 10 amps or above, shop back, circular saw, good example. It says heart stops beating, severe burns occur, death may result. It says grounding is a method of protecting humans. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that. It can sometimes, and it does, but it might not. All right. 
It says, grounding is a method for protecting humans from electrical shock. However, it is normally a secondary protective measure. A ground is a conductive connection, whether intentional or accidental, by which an electric circuit or equipment is connected to the earth or to an engineered grounding system. Right here, they're showing a, a three-wire cord that has a plate, one for the height, one for the grounded conductor, and one for the grounding conductor. And this is going to uh, connect in this hole, go back to the panel, go down a grounding electrode conductor, down to a grounding electrode, and connect it to the earth. Another thing that we could do to, to, to lose that third prong is to buy double insulated tools. And right here is the symbol that it'll show a square inside of a square or it'll say double insulated. That means that all the electrical parts and everything inside has been insulated once. And then on the outside, all the parts you touch and hold and, and hold on to have been insulated in a second layer of outer insulation. Double insulated, does not require a grounding prong. Ground fault circuit interrupter is personnel protection. All right. On this page right here, we have a GFCI dongle, D-O-N-G-L-E. Uh, some people call it a GFCI cord set. You know, you can you can pick up one of these and take it with you everywhere you go on the job site. Any regular plug that you're uh, working off of that wouldn't give you ground fault protection, you could plug in this dongle and run your tools off it and immediately have ground fault protection. So I can get it with this dongle, or I can get a GFCI circuit breaker, or a GFCI receptacle that we will see later on and achieve that protection with it. It says the ground fault circuit interrupter is a fast acting circuit breaker that senses small imbalances in the circuit caused by current leak to ground. GFCI continually matches the amount of current, or monitors the amount of current, going to electrical device against the amount of current returning from the device. All power tools used in construction should be ground fault protected. Make sure that panel switches, outlets, and plugs are grounded. We don't want to use bare wire. We don't want to use metal ladders. Inspect electrical power tools before you use them, and we want to inspect everything before we use it and make sure it's in good working order. And anything that we doubt is in good working order or don't know, we have to go to the competent person and let them make a decision. Never operate any piece of electrical equipment that has a danger lockout tag attached to it. If I was inspecting this cord on this tool right here, I would have to tag it and take it out for service because it's got burnt wires, exposed wires. It's almost to the inner insulation. Never use worn or frayed cables. If the cord is frayed or worn, disconnect the power and dispose of the cord. Make sure light bulbs have protective guards to prevent incidental contact. And it says, often electrical distribution panels, enclosures, and other equipment must be left open during construction, leaving wires exposed. This is when you're working thing, near things that are energized. Sometimes that's true. It says, some or all the wires may be energized. Regulations and company policies will tell you the minimum safe working distance from exposed conductors. The higher the voltage, the greater the required working distance. Make sure you never get any part of your body or any tool that you're using any closer to the exposed conductors than the allowed distance. And lock out, tag out. So particularly with our, our electrical students and our industrial maintenance students, when we say lockout, tagout, they think of uh, panels and disconnects and things like that. But lockout, tagout has got to be for anything that's in that area that could release any stored energy and hurt you in any kind of way. So if I'm going in there and looking, I've got to look at everything that's in the area and, and find a way to lock, tag, or block anything that re may release any form of stored energy. If I'm in there and I'm looking around and I don't know what I'm looking at or I'm unsure of what I'm looking at, I'll make sure that I have a competent person in there with me. And on here they have some locks and tags, you know, like this is for a disconnect electrical, but right here this is a valve lock. It's just a cover that goes around that, that handle there and locks so it would just spin so nobody could turn it on. A pneumatic lockout, we have all kind of different lockouts and tagouts. All right, some review questions for this section. It says, how many amps of electrical current can kill a person? And on here it says one, two, three, or four. And generally, every circuit that you're working on is going to be protected on a 15-amp breaker or higher. So that 15-amp breaker could deliver way more than any of the choices that's listed on this page. All right? How many amps of current does it take to kill a person? It could be less than one. 
It said, what should you always do before using a GFC device or protected circuit? Test it. They got a test and reset button on them, click them. It won't test and reset if it doesn't have power on it, but if it does have power, it will test and reset. All tools used in construction use should be protected in what way? Dust collector with a ground fault, a battery backup, a GFCI. It's kind of tricky. I'm going to say with a ground fault. Yeah. What should light bulbs have to begin, prevent against accidental contact? Electrical wire, danger tag, lockout device, protective guard. I'm going to have a protective guard on those. It says, what type of lockout device is pictured below? Well, that's a, a, a lockout device with a lock through it on a single pole switch. So electrical switch. And what I say with this picture right here is there's a lock tag made to do anything that you could run into in the field that's there. And if it's not, then we got to find a way to block it out. Lock, tag, block out all forms of stored energy. All right, guys, that's it for that section. I'll see you in 5.00.